I was living with my family at 1310 Washington Street near Jones and was awakened by the earthquake shock at 5.16 a.m. on that never-to-be-forgotten 18th day of April. The streets were filled with people with anxious faces, all turned toward the dozen or more columns of thick black smoke rising from the densely populated region south of Market Street. I realized then that a great fire was inevitable. It was at once determined to order out all available troops. The thing at this time that made the greatest impression on me was the strange and unearthly silence. There was no talking, no apparent excitement among the nearby spectators. While from the great city lying at our feet there came not a single sound, no shrieking of whistles, no clanging of bells. The terrific roar of the fire, the crash of falling walls, and the dynamite explosions that were to make the next three days hideous had not yet begun. A few moments before seven o'clock, there arrived the first detachment of regular troops, the men of the Engineer Corps at Fort Mason. Their presence had an instantly reassuring effect on all awe-inspired persons. Before 10 o'clock, the troops from Forts McDowell and Miley had arrived, and there were now on duty about 1,700 regulars. Four square miles of the city were on fire. The night was as light as day, and the roar of the fire, the crash of falling walls, and the continuous explosions made a pandemonium simply indescribable. During the night, the Grant Building, headquarters of the Pacific Division, and the Phelan Building had gone up in the general fire. Scores of buildings were blown down by dynamite and gun cotton, and others were set on fire in order to quarantine the blaze. The Pacific Squadron, under command of Admiral Goodrich, arrived from the south and landed several hundred Marines and Blue Jackets who rendered excellent service in fighting the fire and patrolling the streets. 300,000 people were homeless. Within two days, relief supplies from neighboring states and cities had begun to arrive. In a few days, conditions were as normal as could be expected under the circumstances. And the work of feeding and sheltering the homeless thousands proceeded in a systematic manner. Through all this terrible disaster, the conduct of the people had been admirable. If there is any lesson to be derived from the work of the regular troops in San Francisco, it is that nothing can take the place of training and discipline, and that self-control and patience are as important as courage. <laughs>